Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to My Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to do some upcycling of a Goodwill tray. And we're going to take some Dollar Tree candles and turn them into some grubby, cool home decor. So first we're going to take this tray and uh, clean it up a little bit and make it look a little better. I picked this up for a couple dollars at Goodwill and it was it's very dry old looking so it needs some love so i got this paper from zazzle zazzle.com and i'll put a link down in the description for you if you're interested in this paper or checking out zazzle at all it's great uh great prices on their paper and it doesn't ship too badly actually they have to print it and all that so it takes a little bit but you really get it quite quickly uh, so I have, obviously this is a little bit big for the tray, so I can do this in two pieces. And so I'm trying to decide if I want this bottom piece to go on here or the top piece. And I finally decide, which I'm taking my sweet, sweet time here, but I decide to do the top. Now these flowers are nasturtiums. Uh, I grow these in my garden every year because the bees butterflies, hummingbirds, they all love nasturtiums and you can eat them as well. I never have, I just know that you can. So um, I love growing these in my garden. They add beautiful color and uh, I just it just makes me think of my garden that I can't do anything with because it's covered in snow and it's too cold to grow anything right now. So I just need to cut it and I'm gonna cut the paper just above the garden, the word garden there. So that I'll be able to use that on another piece and it will it will uh, blend in when I get ready to do that. There we go, we cut that off. So in order to take the dryness out of this poor tray, I am taking some of my uh, antique wax watered down mixture and I'm just brushing it on to the edges and the handles of this tray. I don't need it in the middle and I did the back as well. So I brushed it on and then wiped it back and it just gave that wood that was so dry a drink and just made it look less dry and crusty and just um, moistened it and it made it look really cool and brought out a lot of the wood uh, features in the tray. So I wanted to flatten my paper a little bit so I flipped it over and got my iron and ironed it and then I just did a little bit on the front where that kind of fold was. It wasn't folded or creased folded but it was there was a fold there so I wanted to get that out and the next thing that I'm going to do because I don't want straight edges on my paper when I put it on the tray I'm just wetting the edges where I want to rip the paper off. I did this recently on another tray that I did with some Zazzle paper, and I will link that here above so you can check that video out if you're interested, if you haven't seen it. It had some really cute chickens on it. I really, really love that paper too. So this one, I'm doing pretty much the same thing, just wetting it with some water on my finger, and then just going back and ripping the edges. This gives you a little more control on how much you wanna take off, it's more of an organic look too. It's, uh, it just rips where it rips because it's wet. So I went all the way around and look how cool this looks with just the, the different edges on there. I think it looks so good. So I'm not gonna paint the middle of the tray. I think I wanna make this like a, as I was doing this, I was thinking of like a moody blue tray. So this is gonna be kind of a moody piece. It's going to be dark. So I'm not gonna use any light colors underneath it. You'll probably see once I put this down how the, I hope you will, how the, um, what the paper looks like once it's glued down and it hits that dark, the dark tray. Usually you'd want to put a light color underneath there so that it would make it pop. But I don't know if you can tell, it just gives it this darker look and I really like it, so I'm gonna go with it. And I knew that it would probably look all right because the paper was dark, but you never know until you get it down, of course. So I just 
uh, did one edge with the Mod Podge. That's what I'm putting on here. And then I'm just, just kind of smoothing it out there and getting out the wrinkles that I can get out. And then I take my uh, plastic wrap and my little roller and I go over it and try to get out as much of the wrinkles as I can. It's okay if I have wrinkles, but I try to do my best to get them out. So then I did the other edge and or the other side and now I'm just taking the Mod Podge and going over the edges because um, you can't always get every little piece when you do the Mod Podge first and because it's a jagged edge it just they stick up and it's kind of crazy so I just take my Mod Podge and go over the edges first make sure they're down really good and then just cover it all with a thin coat of Mod Podge. So here it is all dry and the reason why I don't really mind if I don't get all of my wrinkles out is because I take a little bit of sandpaper and lightly go over the paper. Now you could skip this part if you want just a plain plain paper and you don't want it distressed but I like mine distressed. I like it to look aged and old and vintage and so I'm going to just rub this over the top gently and it dulls some of the brightness down just a bit. It goes over any wrinkles that you have and flattens those out, but it also creates lines when you do that. And it just, it just gives it this old world look. So now I'm gonna take my brush that I use to put the stain on the wood, and I'm gonna go over the edges of the paper. So I'm just gonna go over the just the edges and I will work my way in and you'll see here so when you go over the sand with the sandpaper over the wrinkles you leave it leaves kind of a white line and the wax will sit down in the lines and create an aged look in those lines so it's not stark white or bright white so I just love that look and um, again you could skip this part if you don't like things so aged but I this is what I like to do. So that's what I do is just take that antique wax and just see how I'm just going over it lighter in the middle than I do in the around the outsides. I still want to see the picture but I want it to look like it's slowly fading into a vintage piece. So there you go. I think it looks so cool. What do you think? Breaking the old grubby mix out for this one, for these candles. We're gonna use the grubby mix on here. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a different way to make some grubby candles. So I found these at Dollar Tree. I, I found them on their website. We don't have them in our store. So I was on there looking for something else and this seemed to pop up and lo and behold, I said, I'm doing it, I'm buying them. I love the look of these, they look like the beeswax candles that you can get and they have the little bumps on them and everything and i love this orange yellow it just reminds me of the beeswax candles so much but they have the white too so you get when i ordered i could i bought 24 and you get uh half half the white and half the yellow orangey color so i am just going to take antique wax right out of the bottle not watered down not anything and I am going to wipe it on to the candle with my brush. This is going to give it an aged look. It's going to um, make it also sticky, which will work in our, to our benefit later on, and I'll show you how. And it also will make it easier for us to, if we wanted to, we could burn these candles I do have a video on how I make my grubby mix 
and do my grubby candles with Mod Podge. Uh, and I will link that above and down in the description. But the you can't burn them if you use the Mod Podge on the top around the wick for a real candle. So I was trying to find a way that we could do it and still be able to burn it if we wanted to. And this way I found does work and I tried it and I will show you later on in this video that it does work. So I'm just brushing this all on, not too thick. You want it to dry fairly quickly. So uh, I just kind of brush it on. If I get it a little too thick, I'll go back over it and uh, wipe it back just like right there, it's a little bit too thick. So I have these 12 candles that I started with, all coated with the wax. I'm just showing you that, um, that I've got them coated. They look different, the different uh, the, between the white candle and the orange candle, but um, it gives it a different look, which is really cool. So I use my heat gun to dry it. You need to be very careful if you do that because this is wax and it will melt if you hold it on there too long, if you get it too close, if you don't keep it moving. Um, but Or you could just let it sit and dry on its own. It doesn't have to be fully dried, but somewhat dry. So I have these stencils. They're six inch stencils. You get a 16 pack from Timu. I got these out of a... Uh, box that I received from them recently and I will have a link to the stencils these are the bee the beehive stencil I think it's called um, and I will have a link down there to that and I have a discount code I will put there as well for 30% off so they're not very much as it is but uh, you'd also get 30% off an order for first time buyers I believe is what it is but Anyway, um, these are great. I love these. And I took a couple of these out and I wanted to use, I like this, the bees that they have on there. So I wanted to put some bees on my little candles. So I thought I would try it. And I did some of these the other day just to practice and see if it would work. I didn't want to show you something that wouldn't work. And it does. Look at that. You can see the bee on the candle, on the beeswax looking candle. I just think it's so cute. So uh, I just just went over the around the bee with more of my antique wax just to darken it up i want this to be a grubby candle if you don't want it to be so dark you could you don't have to do that but uh this is you know i just like my grubby candles so here in comes the grubby mix so this is why you don't really need to let your candles dry all the way with the wax on them because you're going to go right in and and dip it right in the the mix the grubby mix and the stickiness of the wax is going to just grab right onto the grubby mix and hold right onto it uh, then I take a brush that is dry it's just a little paintbrush and I'm brushing off around my little bee uh, painting that I just did my stencil so that you can see that but all around it is grubby so it's kind of cool now you don't have to do the stencil you could just make it grubby uh, on its own and it would work just fine I you know however you want to do it but I really like the look of the little bee on there so I drop it in the plate just to get any of the loose grubby mix off because I'm not going to be sealing this it's going to be loose grubby mix so when you touch it you may get it on your hands but you know what you'll be able to smell it whereas the other way that I do it you will get uh, you don't get a huge smell from all those spices if you seal it in with the Mod Podge, if you do it the other way that I usually do it, which I like too. Uh, sometimes it's not for the smell, it's for the look, but I really love the look of these. It gives it such a really cool grubby look and then the B on the front of it. So here I'm just showing you the difference between the two. I have the orange one in my left hand and the white one in my right hand. And... Um, I just love how they come out. They just look so cute. Now I took the wax and just went, just tamped over the top of the candle and uh, left it that way and it will dry so it won't be tacky. But here I'm trying one of the candles that actually was dropped and it got misshapen. It doesn't look it here, but it's kind of funny. Um, and so I said, well, this is the one that I'm gonna test the 
if it's going to light and stay lit. And it does go right down to the wax and it stays lit. It's pretty cool. I'm going to have these candles on my Etsy shop and I'll have a link down in the description for you to check out. Let me know which of these projects you liked the best down in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already and go down in the description and look for the Timu link and the discount code. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.